How y'all doing? Louisville, Colorado today, Louisville. And uh, for some reason, it is really noisy in this city. We've got some construction down here and all this beeping and all the trucks. And uh, for some reason, a couple of the roads are closed off and uh, there's more traffic than normal. Normally it starts off pretty quiet here and gets busy as the day goes on. And, uh, but it is busy now, even though for some reason on the camera, it doesn't ever look busy. I look at it and go, wow, this is a lot busier than it looks on the camera. But um, I guess that's just one of the phenomenons of video cameras. It doesn't really show you the actual, what's really going on. But uh, well, let's pray. Lord, I just thank you that we can come out to another city, to another location, to another day, and uh, lift up the word of God. We can lift up a banner of truth. Uh, we can lift up our hand. We can lift up our voice and proclaim the word of God in uh, wherever you have set us uh, to do the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we give you all the glory, Father, for what you're doing, even now here in Louisville, Colorado, and wherever anyone else is listening and what they're doing for you also, Lord. We just give you all the glory. All the church of Jesus Christ gives you glory, Father. Amen and amen. All right, so uh, today is uh, Thursday, the third Thursday of the month. I'm in Louisville, uh, which points to the third Friday, which is up there in Nederland, Colorado. That's where I'll be tomorrow. And uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, I could not come out. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, I don't quite get it yet, because I'm only in about my, uh, only been doing this for four years with the banner on the street preaching. Uh, I've never, in all my years of ministry, never got as exhausted and wore out and beat up as I have since I've been on the street ministering. Uh, I don't know what it is. It's just really, uh, I mean, I kind of know it. Obviously, spiritual battle and wall, that kind of warfare. But uh, it really takes its toll on the body. And uh, on Tuesday, I was just wiped out. I literally couldn't get going. Uh, and I just going, Lord, this is just, what am I going to do here, Lord? I mean, it's like, I mean, I'm eating right, I'm sleeping right, I take care of my body. But the uh, spiritual battle of whatever the Lord has me doing is uh, uh, qu quite unique to me. I'm not familiar with it at all. I mean, I've done uh, deliverances for years. I've cast out tons and tons of devils and I've dealt with Satan and his devils a lot. But for some reason, uh, this is a lot different. And I don't know why it's so different. Uh, maybe somebody else knows, but at this point in time, I don't know. And, uh, but I'm searching, and uh, I understand what, you know, we are battles not against flesh and blood and about principalities. I know that verse. I know what it says. I know what the Bible says. But bringing the Bible out of a book into a real life is what I look for. I want, it, I want the living Word of God, you know not just a ink on paper. I mean, this is where it starts kind of like, sort of. I mean, it started from Jesus when he dictated it. But uh, I, want it, I want to see it. And then uh, Tuesday night, uh, I had to do ministry. <laughs> uh, nor, the door was knocked at 9.30 last night, or Tuesday night, the door was knock, knock, knock. And I, I was in bed because I had to get up because I had a busy day on Wednesday planned, scheduled, and uh, I thought, oh boy, that's somebody that knows me who's knocking on that door the way they're knocking, and I thought of a couple different people, and I I better answer that door, because it's probably at 9.30 at night knocking on my door, there's something wrong. So I got out of bed, got you know my robe on, and went out, and, and uh, so it was somebody else that I had, didn't know, it surprised me. And they needed ministry, they said, John, I need to talk to you, I need to pray with you, and uh, I said, all right. So uh, that lasted till 1.30 in the morning, Tuesday morning. It was 2 o'clock by the time I got to bed Tuesday night. After being beat up all day Tuesday and then ministering till 2 in the morning, literally I was wiped out on Wednesday. I thought I could get enough energy to go out to uh, preach on Wednesday, but uh, sorry. I, I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. In fact, it was uh, probably 5.30 Wednesday night. I'm going, Lord, I need strength to get up and go to church tonight. I need strength. 
I, I just, I literally can't move out of bed. I'm so beat. And then after about five, six, seven, eight minutes, it was just a few moments, it seemed like, all of a sudden I just felt my whole body just filled with strength, where there was no strength whatsoever. I could not move. And then it just seemed like my whole body just filled, like a balloon filling up with air. My whole body just filled up. It took, you know, you know, five or six, seven, eight, ten seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, seven or eight, nine, ten seconds. And it's like my whole body was like a balloon. It just filled up with power. And I go, whoa. And I got up, got ready, got on the bus, came to church and had a fantastic night in church last night. And then that carried over to last night and it's carried over to today. It's, uh, you know, uh, the strength of the Lord. So uh, praise God, it got me to, uh, that strength has got me uh, here. <laughs> so I just thought I'd bring a few things up of what's going on. Anyways, that's life, right? So if you don't see a video, it's probably it's because uh, I didn't go out to preach. And if I didn't go out to preach, the only reason why I didn't go out to preach is not because I didn't want to. It's not because I'd rather watch a movie. It's not because I want to go out to dinner. It's not because I have some sort of a date. None of that junk. It's because I've so beat up physically, I physically could not come out. Okay? So if you don't see a video, that means you better be praying. I mean, you don't have to. Don't let, I mean, let me rephrase that. If you don't see a video, if you want to, and if it's something that is in, of interest to you, uh, uh, lift me up to the Lord. I mean, if you don't, that's fine. I don't need, I mean, I don't need anybody to pray for me. God, I pray to God and I'm, God hears my prayers, okay? But we can all participate in prayers. Because maybe you need strength. So if you need strength, because I was praying for other people. I was praying for other people uh, throughout the day, throughout Tuesday, throughout Wednesday. And uh, it was really great. And, uh, so somebody, you find out somebody needs something and you begin praying for that. Maybe there's somebody in your family that needs that. And uh, by you praying, you become like a, a vessel or a receptacle that uh, God can touch and then you can deliver that to somebody. I mean, we all work together. We're one family. We're not a bunch of individuals flopping around all by ourselves. We are one body, one mouth, one heart, one soul, one God. We serve, amen? So uh, we're together. And when one part of the body is hurting, we're all hurting in a sense. And uh, one of the benefits of being connected and uh, is, uh, you know, but, uh, so whatever. <laughs> all right, let's get into the Word. We're in uh, Acts chapter 12. Herod the King is our title for our Sunday prayer letter we've been preaching on, or I preached on Sunday and Monday. And then uh, our letter is split up into seven parts, as you know. And I didn't do part three, four, and five. Today is part five on Thursday. So let's, uh, we'll do these three parts today right now. And it starts in Acts chapter six. No, Acts chapter 12, verse six. Six to 17, all right? And we'll just kind of read through here. And I'm gonna talk as I read because it's kind of a big chunk of scripture here, all right? And uh, it says here in verse six, chapter 12 of the book of Acts. And when Herod, would have brought him forth. We're talking about Peter. Peter was thrown into prison. And uh, <clears throat> Peter was thrown into prison. Everybody was excited about that uh, because uh, uh, James, the brother of John, was killed uh, by a sword, by the sword, by Herod. And it pleased him. And so they, got, they arrested Peter, put him in prison. So, and when Herod would have brought him forth from the prison, that same night, uh, the same night that he was thrown into prison, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. How about that? He was sleeping in the midst of a storm. I thought that was pretty cool. Wasn't Jesus was in the back of the boat one time, sleeping in the storm, and everybody woke him up, say, hey, don't you care that we're gonna die? And he said, hey, what's, what's wrong with your faith? Speak to the storm, quiet it. Why do I gotta do it? You do it, I've showed you many times. Uh, you little faith, right? Speak to the storm, be still. So he got up and quieted the storm. And uh, at that time, in that particular instance, they said, man, who is this guy? Who is this guy? Well, we can say the same thing about Peter. Who is this Peter guy? Well, we know who he is, obviously, but really, who is Peter? It's pretty amazing, because if you read here, you read here, same night Peter was asleep between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers kept before the door kept the prison. I mean, he's got two guards, he's got chains, he's probably chained, 
He's got guards in the door. I mean, this is a blockade. He's probably inside the inner prison. And you think about all these guards around Peter. I mean, who is Peter? You know, I mean, and you can look at those guards as devils in a sense, because they're working for Satan. They're not working for God. I guarantee it. They're not working for God. So if they're not working for God, there's only one other uh, source to work for, one other, and that is Satan. That's it. You either work for Satan or you work for the Creator. Who created Satan? So it's up to you. You can work for whoever you want to work for, I guess. And if you're not saved, uh, you're serving Satan. If you're serving Satan and you're living in sin, uh, you're going to hell. you got to turn from all your wickedness and your evil. You've got to turn from that wickedness. I mean, I can't express that enough. I'm, you, and if you're a believer and you're living in unholiness and you're living in wickedness and you're lying and cheating and stealing, you too, as a believer, are serving Satan. Stop that. Jesus said, go and sin no more. Be holy, for I am holy. I'm really hot on that too. I'm sick of Christians sinning and doing filthy, nasty stuff and they think it's all okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. Get that through your head. It's not okay to sin as a believer. It's really not okay to sin as an unbeliever either because that tells you that you are destined to go to eternal damnation after hell, after the judgment. And it's real. It's real. We prayed on Tuesday night with the, the, the person I was praying with, ministering to. And uh, uh, we came to a real realization that hell is absolutely the worst thing anything could ever happen to anybody. And we really, the Lord just really quickened that to both of us. And uh, of course, I've known that many times. I've kind of experienced not hell, but you kind of, when you preach about hell, it's like God shows you something more about what hell is all about. And it's just really important to to really grasp the enormity of that place. Because you don't want anybody to go there. You don't want anybody to go there. Let me say, you don't want your family members to go there. That's why you've got to pull up your britches, zip up your pants, get on your, get going and go tell your family members about Jesus Christ. Quit being afraid that they're gonna not be like you. They won't invite you to Thanksgiving dinner. Forget all that, man. They won't buy you a birthday present. So what? You're going to give them a gift of life. So go tell them about Jesus Christ. And if you've already told your family, keep praying for them. Uh, then tell your neighbors. I mean, go next door, knock on the door, say, you know, hey, I've been thinking about you lately. Really? I've been thinking about you. You know, I, you know as you know, I'm already saved. I believe in Jesus Christ. I'm a Christian. And I've been thinking a lot about you and your wife and your children. Really? Can we talk for a minute? I mean, you'd be surprised when you tell people you're thinking about them, you're praying about them, and you're on their heart. I mean, be real. Don't be phony. I mean, if it's not, then don't say that. But if you're not, if you're praying for your neighbors next door, then they're probably on your heart. And then you can go tell them the truth. But don't lie to them. Say, oh, I've been thinking about you when you have it. That's what believers do too. But don't say that. I don't copy me. Don't just, just. I'm really serious about that, okay? Be a soul winner. He that winneth souls is what? A fool? Stupid? An ignorant guy? No, wise. That's what the Bible says. He that winneth souls is wise. It's a very wise thing for a believer to do to tell somebody about the gospel of Jesus Christ, all right? All right, so that's what Peter was doing. And that's why he is an important man. When you become more important to God, then you become more important to Satan. And he's got more devils assigned to you. I have probably quadri... He had four quadri... Uh, quad whatever uh, of, de of our soldiers. I probably have that much around me. It's just horrible. Uh, but the Lord gives me grace in the storm. How about that? God gives me grace in the storm. God gave Peter grace because he was asleep. How about that? All right, so the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers and chains and keepers of the door, kept the prison, verse 7. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. Now listen to this. There are three verses, three, all of seven, all of eight, all of nine, I think, and ten. Seven, eight, nine, ten. I mean, these are a big chunk 
of a story about an angel and Peter. And I was thinking about that this morning and on the bus coming out here to, to Louisville. I think, man, Lord, you really dedicated a big chunk of your word for this story about Peter and this angel of yours. And it's really interesting. So since you have so much dedicated to it, we should probably spend a moment thinking about it and talking about it just for a moment here. All right. So it says, verse 7, And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, Peter, and a light shined in the prison. So I was asking the Lord, a light shined in the prison. Understand that there's no electric lights burning. There's no fluorescent lights in the prison. There's no fireplaces. There's no torches burning. It is pitch black dark in the prison. It's dark. Okay? It's nighttime outside. Everybody's sleeping. It's dark in the prison. All right? And when you look through here, I want... It's not because people say, oh, it's because the angel was full of light. How come in other times that angels appeared, he didn't say that a light shined? It just said the angel appeared. Don't talk about a light shining. All right? But here it says a light shined in the prison. A light shined in the prison. So I thought, you know what was probably happened or could have happened is that the angel knew he was going to wake Peter up. And when Peter woke up, pitch black, uh, he couldn't find his way out, so he, he turned the light on so he could, Peter could see. The light of heaven, right? Shine. A light shined and provided illumination in the darkness. I thought that was kind of cool. Something to think about. Not to get mad and critique me, just something to think about. Think it's kind of cool, right? And a light shined in the prison. Hmm, interesting. And smote Peter on the side. Smote. So I looked up the word smote. A lot of people just saw he, you know, slapped. No, smote is a very powerful smacking of almost, uh, if you look through some of the words when smote is used, I mean, it's like taking, it's like what a soldier does to another soldier, an enemy. You smote that soldier. It's like to kill him, to slay him, you know, to smack him upside the head, kind of like. And I think, wow, why did this angel whack P Peter so hard that he smote him. I mean, kaboom! <laughs> you know, I mean, whoa! Peter must have been so sound asleep that when the angel showed up, the angel goes, hey, Peter, wake up. Peter, wake up. Peter! He didn't do anything. Oh, man, oh, man, this guy is sound asleep. Ka-bang! <laughs> you know, that knocked him off his bed, man, onto the floor, I guess, you know. I mean, I smote Peter on the side. Get up! <laughs> <laughs> you know, whack, you know, and so when, you know, and, uh, and raised him up, he said, bang, and then he knocked him on the floor, I guess, and I better get him up now, he picked him up, so stand up, Peter, <laughs> could, could, you know, just think about what was going on, there's a lot of things going on here, these few words, words here, smoked Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, all right, now I got him up, I whacked him on the side, I, he fell on the floor, I picked him up, and the light is shining in the prison. And now I'm going to say to him, rise up quickly. <laughs> quickly, let's get going. You <laughs> Get going, man. And his chains fell off. You know, we say things like this real fast. Oh, his chains fell off. Stop for a minute and think. How did chains, probably on his legs, probably on his arms, all right, wrist, how did they just fall off? That's kind of interesting, right? How do they just fall off? Peter going, wow, they just fell right off me. Do you think God is powerful? Do you think this angel is powerful enough to for the for the chains just to fall off Peter? He didn't have a key. He didn't go in the key door, key locker, and uh, what key is this? He can get the key and unlock Peter. He didn't, it just chains just fell off. How about that? We can look at that in a spiritual sense. When you receive Jesus Christ, the old nature just falls off you. The chains that held you down just fall off you. It's a miracle. God is a miracle God. When people put God into a box and say, oh, God doesn't do miracles anymore, that, is, that just tears me apart because I see the immense, immense baptism of doubt in their life and they do very little or nothing with God because they don't believe in miracles. When you're out preaching on the street, when you're out witnessing, when you're passing out tracts, when you're praying for people, when you're going, I mean, expect a miracle to happen. 
You're, like I went down, I, I went to the bus stop this morning and I was about 10 minutes early and the Lord says, I want you to walk downtown. I said, all right. So I turned around and walked about three blocks down in the old part of town. And uh, I stood there and went, all right, here I am. He says, you're not far, far enough, keep walking. So I walked a little further and then a guy says, hey brother, you know, he jumped off his bench. He was sitting there working and he saw my hat and saw my shirt and he just couldn't believe it. He jumped up and got so excited. Man, I praise God that I saw you this morning. You know, and I, it was amazing. I was like a light shining in his life. It's really amazing. It was really amazing. Absolutely amazing. Anyway, that's another story. But anyways, so be, be a miracle. That was a miracle that happened downtown, Boulder. Miracle. Nobody around, just he and I. Did God know he was there? Yeah, how about that? God must have knew he was there. And he knew I was early, so why don't you go down there? I don't want to have you talk to somebody. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I didn't know that until I got there. It was amazing. So to me, that's a miracle. Huh, it's a miracle. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. All right, so behold, the angel of the Lord came and uh, smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. All right. So I guess his feet weren't chained. Fell off from his hands, okay? And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, gird thyself, you know. <clears throat> bind on the sandals, right? Put on your pants, put on your shoes. <clears throat> bind on thy sandals. And so he did. Peter did that. Peter did exactly what he was saying. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee. Put on your coat. Might have been cold outside, huh? Who knows, right? Put on your garment and follow me. Follow me. Follow me. That's what the angel said. Follow me. So what is Peter going to do? Oh, I don't want to follow you because I, I don't believe in angels. I mean, how many believers have told me I don't believe in angels? Really? I mean, angels are all throughout the book. Fortunately, not too many people have said that. But uh, Or I have never seen an angel, somebody says. Well, I don't know. Does, they, does that mean that angels aren't real? I mean, you haven't seen heaven, have you, have you either? Haven't seen hell, have you? Why do you believe those are real? I mean, it's just, you know, it's just things to think about. People make judgments on the Word of God, and they just don't wait upon the Lord long enough for God to show them some miracles, miracles, signs, miracles, wonders. It's just amazing what God can show you. If you want it, if you don't want any signs from God, you don't want a miracle, you don't want any wonders, uh, I mean, What's that about? Don't you want to heal somebody? Don't you want to cast the devil out from him? I mean, just just think about it for a minute. Is it? I, never mind. All right, so let's go on here. All right, follow me in verse 9. And he went out and followed him. How about that? He followed him. It was not that it was true. He didn't think it was true. How many people go someplace that God told you to go and you're going there, but he says, man, this isn't going to work. This isn't going to work. This is stupid. Why am I doing this? You know, doubt, 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 doubt. Isn't that what the Israelites did when they were wandering the desert? They just doubt, 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 doubt. God gets tired of people's doubt. Quit doubting. Quit doubting. Have faith. Have faith. He followed him, wished not that it was true, which was done by the angel, and thought he saw a vision. Thought he saw a vision. I tell you, this is really some kind of a vision. When you can look down and see your chains are falling off, you got your shoes on, you got your pants on, you got your coat on, and you're walking out the door. Walking out the door. Man, it's noisy here today. It has been one noisy morning. Noisy in Boulder, it's noisy here, it's noisy everywhere today. Why is it so noisy today? I don't know. It's just noisy, noisy, noisy. Man, maybe my ears are turned up. I don't know. I get tired of noise, as you can tell. I like quiet. <laughs> I'm, I'm a very peaceful man. I like quiet. All right, he went out and followed him. Wish not he was true because he, anyways, I saw, I saw a vision, all right? Pretty powerful vision, okay? And when they were past the first and second ward, ward, W-A-R, ward. Ha, I started laughing to myself this morning when I was reading this again. I've read it many, many times. And you know what a Mormon, uh, church is called a ward. A ward. I thought, here it's a prison, 
The Mormons call it a ward. I thought, man, that's a prison cell. Those Mormons are putting people in prison and they're chaining them up and they got guards. That's what the Mormons do. They, they hold you in prison until they go to hell and they take you with them. Mormons do not believe in Jesus Christ. The Jesus that they believe in is not the same Jesus of the Son of God. The Word. That's not the same Jesus. That's what I tell Mormons. I don't, I stop witnessing to them. I just laugh at them. I said, isn't it funny? Your Jesus and my Jesus are two different Jesuses. They look at me kind of funny. Anyways, enough of that. Ward. Second ward. First ward, the second ward, the probably a third, fourth, or fifth ward. We have a lot of wards in uh, Boulder. <laughs> they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city. Okay, Think about this iron gate. That had to have been some massive kind of gate when God said it's an iron gate. It's a big, heavy iron gate that leadeth into the city. And it opened to them on his own accord. The gate just opened by itself. The gate opened by itself. The chains fell off by themselves. The door opened to the prison by itself. The gate opened by itself. And people think that God doesn't know what he's doing. God can't fix things around you. When, I mean, get a better vision. Get a better understanding of who God is in your life. Quit making God some little tiny insignificant God. God is almighty, all powerful. He created heaven, he created earth, and he created all things in heaven and earth. He created angels, he created Lucifer. Satan, the devil, the red dragon. And he created you. Amen. And they went out that gate that just opened by itself and passed on through one street and probably another one, forthwith the angel departed from him. That's a lot of story. That's a big story about Peter and this angel, or this angel and the Peter. How do you want to look, look at that? It's pretty amazing. Anyways, so let's go on to verse 11 now. And Peter was come to himself. He said, Now I know of the surety that the Lord has sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod. Okay, so when you look at the hand of Herod, Peter was not sitting in the hand of Herod. I mean, hand means authority of Herod. Because if you go back to verse uh, 1, Herod the king stretched forth his hands and vexed a certain of the church. And here it says, Peter was delivered from the hand of Herod the king. Herod. And from all the ex... Now listen to this. And was not just delivered from the hand of Herod, but also from the ex expectation of the people. Which people? God's people. God's people were expecting to kill Peter. What kind of people is that? I mean, there are Christians who wish I would get off the streets in Boulder. I've been told that. Your sign is a division in the church. It breaks, it, it, I wish you'd just go away. Go help someplace in some church or some mission. Do something, don't stand out here. Christians, they don't want the banner. I said, well, thank you very much. God bless you. Have a nice day. <laughs> Have a nice day. <laughs> anyway. All right. <clears throat> Delivered out of the hand of Herod from my expectation of the people of the Jews. Pretty sad. Oh, well. Verse 12. When he had considered the thing, he considered it. I mean, he really thought about this. He said, man, this is really cool. This is really cool what God just did for me. Man, I tell you, that reminds me of some other things that Jesus did for me when I was here and there. I remember when Jesus said, I'm going to deny you three times before the cock crows. And that happened. I mean, Peter could be thinking about all of these when he considered this. Because Peter had an experience, had a lifestyle of walking with Jesus when Jesus was here. Peter is something really an interesting man to delve into. Pretty cool. Anyways, all right. He considered the thing, and he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, 
whose surname is Mark. Surname means last name or the highest name or the name of a family. My surname is Shuck. I'm of the Shuck family. Okay, so it's John Shuck. So John surname Shuck. This here is John Mark. John Mark worked with Paul later on. John Mark also wrote the book of Mark. That's, this, that's who this guy is. And his mother was named Mary. I thought that was interesting. <clears throat> All right. So he came to the house, the mother of John, whose surname is Mark. And I uh, also want to highlight something. As, uh, no, I'm going to do that a little later. Sorry. <clears throat> Where many were gathered. Uh, got these bugs crawling on my fantasy. So. <laughs> Uh, where many were gathered together praying. Many were gathered together praying. So when you, you just don't keep reading that, you stop and you find the connecting link. You find the connection verse. You want two verses because out of the mouth of two verses, uh, let it be established. So let's, we'll go back then to verse 2. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. Oh, man, it's going to be one noisy day. All right, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God. Prayer without ceasing un, un, uh, of the church, of the church. So prayer of the church. But here it says in the next verse over what we are just talking about, it says here, uh, there were many, they were in the house of Mary, mother of John's, whose surname is Mark, where many were gathered together, where many were gathered together praying. So you look at that and say, well, okay, well, what probably is going on, so... The church at large, in many different houses, many people were praying for Peter. And in one of the houses, Mary's house, uh, they were praying for Peter. Kind of what I'm thinking. Because the whole church wasn't inside of Mary's house. So it was many houses with many people in those houses, all praying without ceasing. Could have been... One house for one hour, next house for another hour, next house for another hour. I don't know, who knows, you know. I don't know how they got it handled, why they were praying without ceasing. But it says, without ceasing. There was no five-hour break between prayers. There was no one-hour break between prayers. Every minute, every hour, for hour after hour after hour, without ceasing. People were praying for Peter, okay, unto God. All right? Okay, and they were, okay, so... We came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname is Mark, where many were gathered together praying. All right? And as Peter knocked on the door of the gate, you have to knock sometimes. Jesus said, if you knock, it'll be open. If you don't knock, the door won't be open. So Peter could have stood at the gate thinking, well, maybe an angel will show up if I just stand here. Angel of the Lord will open the door on his own accord. You, you can't you can't think that way you're gonna have to knock okay you have to knock on the door okay you have to knock and Peter knocked at the door of the gate and a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda and when she knew Peter's voice so he wasn't just knocking he was speaking Mary let me in Mary John are you in there <laughs> knock 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 and this damsel, Rhoda is her name, knew Peter's voice. I thought, he, she knew Peter's voice. She wasn't looking at him. She knew his voice. That means, you know, everyone has a different voice pattern. Everyone sounds different. And she recognized his voice. She knew Peter was in prison because they were praying for him. But she recognized Peter's voice. That means she had listened to Peter many times before, probably studied under Peter, listened to Peter preach. She knew Peter's voice. Do you know the voice of Jesus Christ? Or when Jesus speaks to you, you're going, who is that? Who is that? Or do you have your ears stopped at the voice of the Word of God? Do you hear the voice of God in your life? Many Christians, how do you know God is speaking to you? I mean, I, wanna, I just want to just throw up on people tell me that. I mean, how do you know that your Savior is speaking to you? How do I know it's not a devil? Oh, my goodness. How do I know it's not me speaking to myself? (laughs) 
You do what Rhoda did here. Rhoda was in the presence of Peter, listening to Peter day and night while Peter preached in the temple, preached in the street, watching Peter. She hung around Peter. So when Peter spoke behind the door, she recognized his voice. That's how you know who God's voice is. You hang around Jesus, you hang around Jesus, you hang around Jesus, and you'll get to know Jesus' voice. I haven't got time, John. I have to work. I have to go to school. I have to, I have, to uh, have breakfast. I have to have lunch. I have to have dinner. I have to plan my vacation. I have to uh, do my uh, financial planning. I got to pay my bills. I got to go to a wedding. On and on and on and on and on and on. People have got excuses. I don't have got time for God. No, it's all right. Doesn't matter to me. I give God my time all the time. I give God my time. My time is no longer my time. My time is God's time. I do what God wants, you know, that's just me though. Don't pretend like, well, I gotta be like John. No, you don't, you gotta be like you. Be like what God made you to be. Don't be like me, I'm nobody. You don't wanna, you know, I just don't copy me. There's nobody can copy me. Nobody, it's just, I'm too weird. <laughs> I, I'm too much of a radical for anybody to copy me. People, people can't keep up. Radical people for Jesus Christ. Just like this guy said, you are, he jumped up and says, you are a ambassador for Christ. Whoa, startled me, because he yelled at the top of his lungs. Big tall guy. He was like 6'2", 6'3". Big guy, powerful looking man. Sitting there with his notebook doing some work at the bench there downtown. And he jumped up and said, you're, he said, you are a ambassador for Christ. I said, whoa. That was man. I thought, wow, startled me. A guy, oh, it kind of jumped me back. You know, I saw him. I didn't realize that was going to come out of him with that loud voice. Man, oh man, it was amazing. Anyway, so uh, this lady, Rhoda, this damsel, Rhoda, knew Peter's voice. She, but <laughs> funny thing is, uh, she was so startled, uh, she opened out the gate for gladness. She was overwhelmed with gladness. So that's what happens to believers too. Jesus comes, he speaks to you, and you get so excited you go running around like a top without, a top without a head on. I mean, whatever, a rooster without a head. I mean, you go running around, and hey, 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 I'm over here, I'm over here, and you're running around telling, oh, I saw a vision, I saw Jesus. Spend time with Jesus. People can <laughs> just uh, slow down, slow down, you know. Anyways, uh, <laughs> that's really funny. But uh, I've seen that before. People get all excited, and uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, when you get ready, you come back, and I'm gonna talk. I got something for you. Jesus says, but you know, they're off running around. Guess who what I saw? Guess what I saw? Guess what I heard? You know, I mean, stay in the presence of God longer than just 10 seconds. She opened out the gate for gladness, but ran in and told them how Peter stood before the gate. I get this. These are people who are praying. They're intercessors, they're praying to receive a miracle from God. I mean, when you pray, don't you expect God to answer? Don't you expect your prayers to work? Don't you expect God to hear your prayers? Or do you just pray, well, I hope God hears my prayers. I'm not sure if God hears my prayers. All right, she told uh, how Peter stood at the gate and they said unto her, thou art mad, he's in prison. You see how people know their prayer? They, they, they say one thing and they do another. They're double-minded. They're filled with doubt. That's why they're double-minded. Believers are. I meet them on the street every single day. Till this morning I met. Crazy, 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 crazy. Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. They said, it is his angel. I mean, they give excuse after excuse when somebody said, God healed me. Oh, you couldn't have been. Oh, it was just a, oh, it was just a uh, coincidence that you got healed. Or it was the vitamins that you were taking. Or you changed your diet or whatever. They just can't believe that God can heal somebody. For example, they couldn't believe that God could get Peter out of prison. And here they are praying without ceasing. All the different, you know, the whole church was praying. I don't know. 
Thou art mad, but she constantly affirmed that it was even so, and they said, It is an angel. But Peter continued knocking. When you begin knocking on the door, and people that have doubt come into your life, you just keep on knocking. Just keep knocking and saying, I'm, you know, whatever. You just keep knocking. Because eventually somebody's going to come to your rescue. Somebody's going to come, and God's going to answer you the knock that you're knocking on the door. Ask and you'll be, you know, ask and you shall receive. Knock and the door will be open. You know, all that kind of stuff. And the Bible is clear. If you don't knock, you won't, the door won't open. If you don't ask, you don't receive. And a lot of times people don't receive or the door's not open because they don't believe it. All right? So if this damsel Rhoda couldn't get them to say, hey, the, I'm not lying to you. I know Peter's voice. <clears throat> but Peter continued knocking. When they had opened the door and saw him, guess what? Oh, they were astonished. Oh my goodness, look at this, Peter. They, it's just like, wow, astonished. But he beckoned them with the hand to hold their peace. They must have been screaming and jumping and down and hollering and stuff. Why don't you begin jumping up and down and hollering before your prayer gets answered? That may speed up the process a little bit. That's why I don't like when people pray and they 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 pray. When you pray, you pray with all your heart, soul, mind, and body. You pray according to the word of God and you say, amen. So be it. God heard my prayer. God's gonna answer my prayer. And now I'm gonna walk in praise and thanksgiving and gladness that God heard my prayer and God's gonna answer it. And from that moment forward, you just say, thank you, Lord, for my prayer. Thank you, Lord, that you answered my prayer. Thank you, Lord, that you heard my prayer. You don't keep asking the same prayer over and over and over and over and over. That is doubt, 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 and God doesn't hear your prayer. You just stand believing to receive your prayer. Many people just flat don't know how to pray. And I blame that on church pastors not teaching their people how to pray. And how to pray, oh dear God, bless my dinner, amen. That's not a prayer. <laughs> people get mad when I say that. That's why I say it so much. <laughs> I like getting people riled up. Get some thinking. I'm so tired of people being so status quo. I want to get people fired up, you know? So I say things that get people mad. It's, uh, when anger rises up, but they 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 say something, they do something. I'm good. You're mad. Let's now let's get it fixed. Let's go do something. <laughs> I was mad yesterday, last night at the devil. I tell you, I was hollering up a storm, quoting scripture at the top of my lung. I was screaming out the Bible verses. I was yelling at the top of my lungs Bible for probably. An hour, hour and a half, my voice, my throat was sore. But I would, didn't want to shut up. I was just making sure the devil heard the word of God. I was just furious at what the devil was doing at a distance from me. All right, so they were astonished. But he beckoned them with the hand. Shh, quiet, man, quiet, quiet, quiet. Declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out. So he, you know, said, quiet, quiet. And he declared to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. So he gave his testimony, right? And he said, go show these things unto James. Now, stop and think when you, the S-H-E-W is in the King James. Show. So the S-H-E-W is not the same word as S-H-O-W. They're, they're two different things. This word, S-H-E-W, is a word that says, go and demonstrate, act it out in a format that is, so people can see what happened, all right? It's not just to, so it's a demonstration, it means a dem to demonstrate. Go demonstrate on what happened, to give them an example, you know, show and tell. Uh, and that's kind of what show, that's show, it means show and tell. You know, show it and tell it, you know, kind of, so it's just, you know, it's not just giving them a picture, a photograph. No. Here, here's Peter, got out of prison. No, that's not what you're doing. Show things unto James and unto the brethren. And I stopped here and I asked the Lord. I said, it says James and the brethren. Go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And I went back up to verse 2. 
See, when you read the Bible slowly, deliberately, with the Spirit of God, you will see things like I'm showing you and demonstrating to you. And you won't, you'll, you won't just read it like a mystery novel, like a John Grisham novel or whatever. Whoever is, whoever, I used to listen to a lot of John Grisham in the truck. And uh, it's just, I love lawyer stories. And uh, he loves Jesus and, uh, and he has that flavor inside his books. They're clean, I like. Anyway, that's years and years and years and years and years and years and years ago. I remember I was a trucker for 40 years, okay? <laughs> and show these things to James. And so I stopped and I said, Lord, it says here in verse two, and he killed James, the brother of John. So here's James here. Which John are they referring to? Is James here one of the disciples of the, of the you know, of Jesus, one of the apostles? James the apostle and the brethren, the, the other brethren, the other apostles? See, I don't know that. It's not clear. Thanks, James and the brethren, and they're the brethren. The brethren, I'm, I'm guessing he's referring to James the apostle and the other apostles. But in verse two it says, and he was, and he killed, and Herod the king uh, killed James the brother of John with the sword. So I thought that was interesting. I, I, I just noticed that this morning, about an hour ago. I go, whoa, look at that. And anyways, I thought that was interesting. All right, so we'll just keep going here. And he departed and went into another place. And departed and went into another place. Do you notice that God didn't tell us what place that was? God will tell you what he wants to tell you. If he doesn't want to tell you, guess what? He is not going to tell you. Doesn't say where he went. But if he wanted to tell you where Peter went, it would have been important for us to know that. He would have said that. But all it says, and he went into another place. So at this point in the story, we don't know what place that was. Apparently, it doesn't matter what place he went into. All right? So these are highlights in the Word of God to bring your attention to, to spend more time and intrigue and wonderment and childlike attitude towards Jesus. Quit pretending like you know it all, like I'm some big kingpin, I know all the Bible, there's nothing I don't know. Don't do that. Be like a kid. Like, why is the sky blue? Why is the fire yellow? Or whatever, you know? Why are your eyes green? <laughs> why are your eyes hazel? Whatever. You know, why are they, you know, why? Why? Why, 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 why? God likes that. God likes that. And it creates a dialogue between you and God. It creates that dialogue. Don't pretend like you're somebody special. You're not. <laughs> Jesus is, okay? Like me, I, I am nobody. Tell you the truth, I tell you that all the time. But people just don't believe me when I say, I'm nobody, man, I'm nobody. Don't try to make me somebody. Jesus is the somebody. I'm just a servant. Yeah, you know, I'm a kind of a vocal servant, kind of in your face type servant. Yeah, I know that. But uh, anyways, pretty interesting and I love the Word of God I hope you love the Word of God I hope you're living in the Word of God I hope you're walking in the Word of God I hope you see that every Word of God is pure that the Word of God is a living testament of who Jesus Christ is in our life and I hope you get back into the Bible and you really study it and you ask God what about the Bible <clears throat> that's what he asked me what about the Bible you're reading so ask that God that too. You know, just don't, I was preaching that on yesterday out loud in my house. People are reading Bibles that have 666 on the front covers. So they rip the front cover off. Oh, I don't want that on my cover. They rip that off. See, it's a Bible. So it said right there, Bible, Acts, and here's Acts chapter 12. But they're reading a Bible that was stamped on the front, 666. See how people are? Christians, they're just, they got their head in the sand. So help people get out of the sand. That's what I'm trying to do here, to bring the light to the Word of God. 
So you can go, man, that's pretty cool. I never seen that before. I never saw that. Wow, thank you. Wow, look at this. Look at this. Look at that. That's pretty cool. That I like that. That's how you want to be in the Word of God. You just don't read it like a book and you throw it down on the desk and put it back in your bookshelf and you go on about your day. That's, you know. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that we can come to you in prayer. And we know by your word that you hear our prayers because your prayers say the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. That you hear our prayers. You just don't hear our prayers if we ask according to the word of God. Uh, you hear our prayers and you answer our prayers. You give us the answer. And I thank you, Lord. We give you the glory and the praise. And we just say thank you now already. Before we even get the answer to our prayer, we say thank you now. Thank you now. Right now we say thank you. And we receive our answer by faith. We don't have to wait to see it. We receive it by faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's a substance, Lord. We, we have that substance within us. It's evidence. The evidence of things not yet seen. So we have evidence. So we praise you. We have substance. We have evidence that our prayers have been heard and are answered according to the Word of God. <clears throat> we thank you, Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Praise God, right? Praise the Lord. All right? I don't, I don't want to leave you guys. I feel like I'm on camera. I feel like people are watching me. I think that's kind of cool. Anyways, I'm going to lift my banner. And uh, I'm under the shade tree. Normally, I'm over there. But I'm here under the shade tree because it's about 90 degrees right now. And i got a little bit of a wind, so it's not too bad. And uh, All right? So have a great day, man. God bless you. I love you very much.